What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Harv Video Order Stuff and in this episode I'll show you how I filmed a live band music video with a three camera setup. There are quite a few pitfalls with this kind of project, it's pretty crazy. So I'll go over camera movement, lighting, lenses, white balance, shooting modes, this is practical stuff I know you'll find helpful. Now I'm going to shut up and roll that intro. <laughs> As ever, links to everything mentioned in this video is in the description box below, and of course this is not sponsored content, so be sure to show some love for the channel, hit the subscribe button, the notification bell, that means the world to me and plus you won't miss any videos. Thank you kindly. So the location was the amazing Axe and Trap Studios in Wells, and the band are a three-piece, quite cool and gritty band called Evil Owl. If you want to check out the final versions of the videos, I will link them in the description box below. We shot the video in the studio's live room, which firstly looks amazing, but also sounds amazing, and that's probably the most important thing for this kind of project, because obviously whilst I'm filming, the studio are recording the band, and they've got to sound good, right? Let me show you a top-down view of how I set up. The drummer was in the corner, then we had a guitarist on the right, and the singer slightly forward and on the left. My first priority was to get a camera on the lead singer, as I know this is an angle I want to be cutting to very frequently. I went with my Sony a7S III with the Sigma 35mm f1.4 Art and MC11 adapter. This combo allowed me to make use of the incredible autofocus whilst allowing me a field of view wide enough to see the drummer as well as the singer. This would be the only static camera angle I have, but I figured as long as it looks good, things will work out okay. Next I needed a wider angle shot of the band, preferably with the guitarist on the right being the most prominent subject. I used my Sony a7S II with the Sigma 20mm f1.4 on a motorised slider which I set up to rock back and forth. This would be my set and forget safety shot that always looks good and has some nice motion. Finally, I used a Canon EOS R handheld with the Sigma 50mm f1.4 art. I figured if I am going to use my least favourite camera of the three, I should at least use my favourite lens. The idea was to capture anything of interest that I might want to cut to in editing like a guitar solo or a drum fill. Thankfully, the combination of one static, one motorised slider and one handheld angle worked really well together. In terms of lighting, I wanted to keep it really simple, so I chose to use a lot of the practical lighting in the scene, and then just a couple of panels to just to bring the exposure up on both of the guitarist's faces. After all, it was a live recording of that band, and I wanted it to look like they were recording in that room, and have that same kind of character, but look a little bit better. That was my goal. Then there was the issue of white balance, and if you've ever tried matching white balances from two different cameras, or even just two different cameras but within the same brand, they rarely ever match perfectly. Obviously, the last thing I wanted to do was to use auto white balance, so I did a custom white balance on my Sony a7S III. That's the camera I trust the most when it comes to colour. And then I matched the colour temperature on the other cameras. Did it work? Sort of. In terms of shooting modes, I decided to opt for the most flexible options possible, which in the Canon's case was C-Log, and the two Sony's were both in S-Log 3. The reason for this was not to have maximum dynamic range, it was actually just so I'd have maximum flexibility in post for matching colours and contrast curves. Now I know we now have the Cinematch software which looks incredible and I do intend to take a close look at it, but I didn't have it at the time so all the tweaks I had to do manually. Firstly I added a lookup table that I knew I'd be using on all the clips, and then I set about doing colour temperature and tint adjustments. To me the Canon looks too magenta, the a7S III too green, and the a7S II too cool. I also made some exposure adjustments, and once I've made all these tweaks, they look like this. Next I focused on skin tones because I definitely want them to look good. This is a particularly important step, and the way that I like to sort out skin tones is to use my video scopes and to use vector scopes. So I'm in Final Cut and I've opened up my vector scopes. I'm going to drop on a shape mask and just drag it over our subject's face. I'm going to try not to get too much of the background. I only need a very small area to work with and I'm just looking at the skin tone line and I'm just going to do a very minor tweak to the midtones just to drag it into line. Of course I'll repeat this step for the other two clips as well. 
Now that's done, I'm going to move on to the final stage and all I'm going to do is add a letterbox for that widescreen look, a small amount of a more stylized grade, mainly to add a little bit more contrast and give it that 3D look. And then I'm going to add some very subtle film grain effect. All of these last tweaks were done with Motion VFX M Film Look, a plugin that I just love for this kind of thing, which I reviewed and I'll link below. And that's about it. It was a really fun session. The band are great. And I was pretty damn happy with the videos that we made. These music videos were a far cry from the most fancy music videos that I filmed, but that really wasn't the point of these. You know, it, it's a live recording, so it's always gonna look a little bit live. And that, I wanted to encapsulate that, you know? I'll link the music videos below if you want to check those out. That's it for now. Definitely ask me questions about this in the comments section below. I'm down there as much as I can. I just hope you found this video interesting and helpful. I've got a large back catalogue of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you and the one below is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.